And then for Bradley, somebody's got to help Daryl Brown. I always think January, this time of the season, you start to get some definition. You kind of try to, at least you want to figure out what your team can and cannot do. I still feel with Bradley, they're still trying to figure that out, particularly with their lineup. They are. And, you know, Luke Van Bray has not gotten consistent time at moments. And then last week he got an opportunity. And I think this kid's a really good player. He's just got to be really good on the glass tonight. First possession, Illinois State's. Game on in the Valley, America's Renaissance Conference. Well, you get a quick foul on Malik Yarborough, but they get two offensive rebound opportunities. I said to you in the open, they cannot allow Illinois State to make a living on the glass at the offensive end. Easier said than done with Phil Fain. He's one of the best offensive rebounders, if not the best offensive rebounder in this league. 2-3 zone out of Illinois State saying to Bradley, Hey, you guys don't shoot very well. Prove to us we should come out of this zone. Good slice underneath. And a decent look from Elijah Child. So both teams missing at the rim to start the game. Fain, outstanding move inside. Rams feel a little tight to start to get A little tight, but again, Bradley that gets the job done and does not give up an offensive stick back for a hoop. Brown in too deep. Yarborough, bucket. Will Brett Smith count it? As Luke Monlundy trying to get back, they will count it in an and one opportunity for Malik Yarborough. He's got a veteran officiating crew. Brett Smith. Love his haircut. And <laughs> Paul Jansen and Tom O'Neill. There's Brett Smith. Tom O'Neill, the man of that is right near Brian Wardle right now. As he jogs by us. This is his 3,195th game in a career that has spanned 42 years since 1977. Amazing official. Nice dish underneath. Block. Terrific block by Matt Chastain. You talk about rotating over and getting it out of here. Deep one drain and a great start for Illinois State. Keyshawn Evans in his career. He's a good three-point shooter, streaky. But prior to that, in his career, in this rivalry, just 5 of 24 from three. This is how you erase a shot opportunity. Watch Chastain, 22, how he's going to read this. He does a really good job. There's the dribble, and he finds a way to not try and foul from behind, get in front of the shooter, and make the play. And there's Von Bray. My guy makes a shot. Von Bray gets Bradley on the board, but by watching that replay of Chastain's block, and that's against Childs. He's usually the shot blocker, a very long player. Yarbrough decides to hit a triple. Three possessions of three-point possessions for Illinois State. Yarbrough plays with a lot of passion. He does. Two threes and an and one for the nine-point total for Illinois State to start the game. Eight to shoot. Von Bray's got to defer. And off has Stain and out of bounds and a break for Bradley. Big break for Bradley. Get an opportunity. You're 9-2 down already. You're trying to play with some confidence against a really talented opponent. Substitution early for Warley. He's trying to get his own buster in there. Puts Nate Canal in the game. Dan Muller has the jacket off, and he is ready. D'Lo checking out for Bradley. Boy, active zone early for Illinois State. Lundy. Again to penetrate. No blocking this time. Elijah Childs flushes it. Well, that's how you beat a zone, by getting into gaps and dishing. You can't dribble through a zone, but you can force defenders to react to you. Excellent job. 
Evans trying to use the screen. Illinois State did a good job getting back. Von Bray able to get inside. So the last two possessions, Bradley able to get to the guts of the zone. No doubt, but a great pass by Nate Cannell. Excellent job. Fain well defended by Von Bray that time. And again, a good job on the glass. I told you he was long. Eight rebounds a game. The Bradley Braves are the best offensive rebounding team in the Valley. It's just getting the ball to go in. And you know what? Getting a few of these hoops. Listen to the crowd. Evans keeps launching. And he's hit two of the three. The veteran, Keyshawn Evans. Just 29% from three this season to start, but here early, a factor. A good little buzz in the arena for this game. <laughs> Child's trying to go to that short corner. And yes, you can feel the blood flow. Elijah Child. Keyshawn Evans with a three to answer. Chips, Hersey, Hawkins, Mitchell Anderson. We can go right down the line. Their great run in 2006 when they beat Kansas to go to the Sweet 16. They're trying to get all that back here on the hilltop. I coached in this building. How'd that go? And it didn't go well. <laughs> they had Hersey and Boise winners, Jimmy Les, all these great players. It did not end well for us. One of the nation's best teams that year. Fain, isolated. And Koch Bar holds the fort. And Pinnell on the attack. Or give Brian Wars team credit. They're trying to attack the zone early in transition. And have no fear going right at him. Yeah, they're doing a good job pushing the pace. And then if it's not there, getting into what we call secondary break opportunities before you finally pull it back out and run your regular sets. This is the guy that Bradley would like to get going as Adowu comes in, Ray Adowu for Illinois State. But Kamel, he had three threes at Southern Illinois. Cap prior to that, four of 24 from three. Well, he really struggled shooting the ball last Wednesday. I was really impressed with Drake. Really impressed. Well coached, Darren DeVries. Darren DeVries is an outstanding coach. They lose their best player. He goes down with a knee injury, and they still look to me to be a team that I would not want to play. Now stepping out on the end line is Matt Hine trying to give Dan Muller some minutes and turns it over. Dan Muller, one of the best defensive players to play in this league. Two-time defensive player of the year. And they ruled the roost in the Valley when he was here. Rico Hill, Jamar Smiley, and others when Kevin Stallings was the head coach. Eight to shoot. Big three. Back it up to hit it. Lukman Lundy with the three. Just his fifth three-point make of the year in cap. Single digits on the shot clock. All the way down to four seconds on the shot clock. Somebody had to make a play. He squared his shoulders and knocked it down. Big bucket. Bradley's first lead. Good job by Koch Barr on the block out there. Lundy able to get the step back here. See, this is good ball movement. And then you just got sometimes you just gotta make a play. Go to the short corner, shot clock's running down, step back. Boom. Brian 
and Wardle said in conference play, particularly here at home, that's the shot they've not been making. Late shot clock or to get the crowd revved up, this would be another one. That's what they need out of Cannell. He's got to make those shots. He's a good shooter. Yarbrough and Illinois State right now just launching. Great pass. Lodia Gunley trying to get down the floor, but D'Lo has a shot block. Second big block for Illinois State. What a block by Yarbrough. Took the shot, hustled down the other way, and made a play. A three in the corner. Long from Matt Hine, and Illinois State has hit the ice. Six to shoot. Von Bray's got to put this up. In and out. Good defensive possession for Illinois State. And the Redbirds cap, after having some decent opportunities at the rim to start, it's been all on the perimeter of late. Really good job by Bradley defensively, and another one and done. Just pushing him out. Good skip, Daryl Brown from Kochbar for three. Nice job, Kochbar. He had a shot opportunity. It wasn't a great one, but it was there, and he found somebody with a better opportunity, and he buried a triple. That's two of them for Daryl Brown. Brown eighth in the league and makes from bonus. And another launch, and now a foul on Matt Chastain. Well, you got to be able to block shots at this level. Wow, what a block by Malik Yarbrough. You also got to be... They're both on the road tonight at 5-1. and one. Illinois State wins here on the road tonight. They can inch even closer. They can, and Loyola beat Valparaiso, so they've got the first half of that tiebreaker. Well, what's Bradley done here to kind of settle down after a rough start? They've controlled this game. I think they've pushed the pace some. They're going to be an offensive foul on Childs on a push-off. Really good call. Brett Smith with a really good call. They look at what's called advantage, disadvantage on the low block. And there was clear advantage on a push-off by Elijah Childs. And two of the best athletes in this league squaring off with Phil Fain and Elijah Childs, the two number tens. Dan Muller trying to get Phil Fain involved. Tough shot, just stayed right with it. He is left-handed. How strong is Phil Fain? He's tough, and he did a good, did a good job walling him off. And he felt it, felt it, never dragged the pivot foot. Everyone was yelling for a travel. It was a good no call. Illinois State was one for its last nine prior to this. Well, they've done a really good job here defensively. Sivan Bray holding his ground, and then Fain never moves the pivot foot. Well done. Bradley's moving better tonight without the ball. And they're going right at Illinois State. Tough. Dribble drive and finish. Well, if I'm not making my three, I'm going to attack inside. Nice job by Cannell there. Uh, the movement without the ball for me is the best thing I've seen out of Bradley tonight. Redbirds trying to play through Fane, scoring up this time. He has been one of the better shooters in field goal percentage in Valley history. Top five again this year. He's tough. Brown left alone. Hits oh, another three. He's feeling it now. He's feeling it now. 
He had 32 in a game earlier this year at Indiana State. That was a loss. I don't like the shot selection there. Too quick. Get the ball to your guys who are really tough inside. And I don't like that shot selection either. <laughs> he was feeling it too much. That was a heat check. <laughs> Childs of luck. Watch ball movement. This is how you move without the ball. Watch Cannell. He's going to feed it here to the high post and then just does a good job moving without the basketball. And that sets him up to get a layup. Really nicely done by Nate Cannell. Pretty good set by Brian Wardle running off those staggered picks. A culpa, man. Bradley's playing with some fight. They are really locked in right now. It's a credit to the guy in the red jacket. Get that out of here. Big time block. Armand Brummett, outstanding athlete, a freshman from Decatur, Illinois, with the rejection. Good flash by Fain. And Fain's over the back. He wants that shot back. He knows he missed a shot in the paint that he normally makes. He picks up the foul right there. Dan Muller with the decision. It's that. Yeah, I'd take him out. Second first half foul. Everybody's trying to figure out what to do with that, and he's coming out for now. Settle him down. Let him just catch his breath. He'll be back in, son. Back to the zone again from Illinois State. Brown in the middle. I like it when teams get the little guy in the honey spot. That was yeah. a good look. He did it really nice. A great pass. Great pass. Copeland with the dive for the dunk. And Bradley had been getting back so well on defense that he just gave up an easy one. Koch Barr gets a stick back. He I think Childs missed it so badly it came right to Koch Barr. Keyshawn Evans was never expecting that pass. He looked low. Good catch. Boy, quick shot. Malik Yarbrough. Eight. Sneaky eight. He had six early. He averages 17, second in the league. Transfer out of St. Louis University. The Billiken. Another dish inside the straight line drive. Killing Illinois State right now. Yeah, their interior passing has been excellent. If you really want to look at the best things Bradley's done, moving without the ball, one and done on the defensive glass, and really good interior passing. had his second explosive play of the half. And a foul now on Illinois State. How about William Tinsley? Now that is a big time pass for a big time dunk. Been in the paint and they haven't come just from big guys. Their uh, perimeter guys have been able to get to the rim. Slicing and dicing moving very well without the ball. It's a huge key. It's such an underrated skill. Some hope for this kid, Armand Brunnett, for the Bradley Braves, an athlete and a freshman from nearby Decatur, Illinois. I remember going recruiting in Decatur, signed a young man by the name of Brett Andricks, and I ran into him a couple years ago, and he was with it holding his son. I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm not that old. I just was in your home. 
Uh, no, that was actually a long time ago. I want to ask you, Brad, but you mentioned they're playing with a lot more energy than you saw them a week ago. Can a single moment and a win as Yarborough, again, just teeing that one up, can a single moment of beating Southern Illinois and getting a big shot late, can that flip a season, or, or can that make that much difference going into tonight? It can because it gives you confidence. You get a win over another rival in Southern. And then, let's not forget, they're coming home and they're playing a rival. This is a big game, the war on 74. Bam, another triple. Brown. So yeah, all of it, it's a perfect storm for them. Nine for Brown, three threes. Again, the Redbirds have been dominant of recent in the rivalry. Yarborough again will try a three, way off. He's, for me, he's settling too much. He's too good a player. He's such a talented kid. Get the ball in the scoring area. It's, he's hanging out at the three too much for me. The Braves last year, 20 wins. They were able to get to Arch Madness in the semis for the first time since 2010. A great start to the season, winning the Cancun Challenge. And now maybe they're getting some of that sass back in them. Great pass. Good inside feed. Good. Ja'Shawn Henry. Well, that was a tough shot to finish. Great feed, catch, and power that ball up. Illinois State needs an answer here. Fain against Childs. Love this matchup. Childs wins it this time. Yeah, and another one. One and done. And Bradley getting some distance here. Childs is open on the baseline. I just don't know if they can get it to him. Well, they've been going to that short corner. They are trying to duck that guard, Darrell Brown, into the middle of the zone. And now Evans is fouled before the shot. Well, watch this pass. I mean, this is not an easy pass to get in and not an easy pass to complete. Wow, well done. Bradley. But I get to choose where we go for yeah, dinner. Exactly. Uh, and it might be the uh, media the media area where there's free food. Uh, what a great postseason tournament, though. It's really one of the, it's one of the best. It's, it has an NCAA regional feel to it. I've it said does. it for years. And when people go to it for the first time, they go, you weren't lying. Great slip. Fame. All right, out of the timeout, Dan Muller trying to get the look he wanted from Phil Fain. He got it, and he's got an and one opportunity. Yeah, really good job. Coaches can really make their hay out of timeouts when they get opportunities to get a play set up, drawn up, and called. Dan Muller is as good as they come in that situation. Well done. Fain throws it in there. A reminder that... Stay tuned for a halftime report, a presentation of State Farm. It's there for you when things go wrong, but also here to help life go right. Talk to an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM. A couple moves here out of the timeout by Dan Muller. He got the isolation pick and roll to get Fain a three-point play. Then he goes to all-court pressure for the first time. He does, and they get Keyshawn Evans on a bump. He didn't think it was a foul, but freedom of movement is how they play the game today. It's just different. I remember when I was coaching, and this is going back now into the mid-80s, guy would run through the lane, and you would give him a, you would teach, take your forearm, and knock him off stride. Well, now that's a foul. Back then, that's why you saw teams not be able to get their offense initiated. Illinois State fouling Deshaun Henry, just 49% at the line. He misses the front end of a one and one but Copeland, who's had some big moments, including 21 at Valparaiso, can't hit that shot. And now it's off Childs. Active hands by Zach Copeland. And Illinois State trying to get a, a surge here. Yeah, they pushed the pace and tried to go down the court on a home run ball. 
Visit participating Schnucks and Hy-Vee locations and your ticket discount section of ArchMadness.com to get your Purina Dog Chow Family Fun Pack. These are cool. Four tickets, four sodas, two popcorns, 75 bucks. Get your Purina Dog Chow Family Fun Pack today. Evans hit two early. He's been way off since. And Von Bray, point blank. Again, in the middle of that lane, when that zone, they're setting it up, and it's wide open in there. You make a living all day long, especially a guy as tall as Von Bray. Copeland not there tonight. He is 0 for 5. Bray again. Koch Barr sneaks inside. Uh, he just outworked Malik Yarborough. That, that was, that'll be one Dan Muller's going to run the tape back and go, Malik, you got to work harder, kid. You got to get inside him. And Malik, you're third in the league in rebounding. Koch. Hey, you got to get real aggressive with a guy like Koch Barr because he's not overly strong. He's lanky, got long arms. You've got to move him off his spot. There you see the offensive rebounding. Bradley leading the conference at 10 offensive boards. It just hasn't translated to buckets until tonight. That's a much better shot opportunity for Yarborough. Just didn't get it to go down. I mean, the Braves, in the non-conference, they average 71 points a game. 55 in Valley play. They're tracking at least 70 tonight. Easy. Nice you know, recovery. The, the, the interesting thing, I was talking with Brian Pito, who broadcast for Bradley for a long time. He said the coaches have remained so patient with this team, even during the struggles. That's a huge thing. Guys feed off of that. A badly needed three from Keyshawn Evans for the Illinois State Redbirds. Bradley looking to possibly play two for one here. They're going to get it anyway with a foul on Keyshawn Evans. Second foul on Evans. Brian Wardle was exhorting his team to look at a quick two and play the two-for-one game. Copeland back in. Evans has to set with two fouls, and so Bradley will get an opportunity to score and still get potentially the last possession of the half. Brown front end of a one-and-one. One. He's got ten in the first half, Darrell Brown. At the line, 71%. As the Braves playing with confidence tonight. Yeah, he's delivered so far, Daryl Brown. Decent hustle by Cox Barr, but Illinois State will get it. And Illinois State started with a seven point lead right out of the gate for Dan Muller. Yeah, it was nine to two, and you're thinking, uh oh, Bradley trouble and they did a great job settling down now a press to kind of burn up some time here I think 24 second differential but a point press at the very least to try to slow down the half court possession of Illinois State stay man to man Yarborough. Offense, no doubt about it. Uh-oh, technical foul. Dan Muller just got a technical foul with 29.3 to go in the half. An offensive foul on Malik Yarborough, and now a technical foul on Dan Muller. Uh, Dan better be careful. He's out on the court now. He's already gotten one. 
He's got to be careful. He needs a get back coach like they have in the NFL. I know he's very upset. Well, Paul Jansen got him after the offensive foul call. Ben Miller did not like it at all. And now Tom O'Neill will try to calm down the former Illinois State star. Back to the offensive foul. Yarbrough initiating the contact here. He is furious. Well, he didn't like the call against Yarbrough. And Paul Jansen didn't like Coach Muller's reaction. Now Bradley, 14-point lead and the last possession. This has worked out perfectly for Brian Wardle. Brown, deep three. Well, I mean, that's just fitting. Apropos how the half's gone. 17 point lead. 17 point lead for the Bradley Braves time with an explosion shot they allowed what I call emotional baggage to derail them in the game emotional baggage can be missed shot turnover somebody blows by and gets a layup or a dunk and it's your guy you've got to move on from that tonight they have down 9-2 and now they're up 17 and they get first possession of the second half D'Lo hasn't done much enough Foul on Chastain of Illinois State. Good call. There's no doubt about that. I mean, Bradley's done this. He only have four from Elijah Childs. And Dwayne lodier Gonlier, who averages nine, he's not yet to score. So it's not like they've had to have... Those guys step up. Now, Daryl Brown's been the great pass factor in Von Bray. Big on little. Somehow they got Keyshawn Evans at six foot, giving up 10 inches to try to guard Van Bray. That's a third foul now on Keyshawn Evans of Illinois State. And there's a traveling violation. That is, it, that is a dead ball that you're throwing it in on. It's not after a made basket. Cannot run the baseline. That's a travel out of bounds. And Dan Muller was screaming it, but Tommy O'Neill was all over it. So can Illinois State get decent shots here? They were able to get some isos to Fane. And they go to Fane on an iso. See? So much better to get some action going to the basket than settling, which I thought they did a lot in the first half, settling for the first look from three. And you watch the pass inside, good catch, doesn't put it on the deck, and finishes it. And especially when it's Fane. The Valley Fane hangout is the perfect gathering place before and after games during Arch Madness. Look at it at Bar Park Vill Ballpark Village, downtown St. Louis, just across the street from Bush Stadium. For additional information, visit archmadness.com slash fans. When that's Phil Fain doing that stuff, you've got a pretty good opportunity that something good's going to happen. If, if I'm on Illinois State Redbird, I'm ticked off. I am really, really ticked off, and I'm playing with a chip on my shoulder. We'll see if they do. Nice answer. Great job, Luke Von Bray. That kid is a really good player. He just, in my opinion, I saw him as a freshman. This kid's going to be a stud. He's got to be more aggressive offensively. He's got to look for a shot because he's got the ability to make it. Just his 14th made three of the season. Evans trying to get some contact. D'Lo, Von Bray, he now tag teams Daryl Brown. Those two have combined for 24 Bradley points. It's a 19-point Bradley lead. Well, that you're not going to stop a runaway freight train like that. What a play. Although Phil Fain slow getting down the court. And Childs with a dunk answer. I think Fain may have twisted an ankle. 
Boy, Illinois State does not need this. Remember last year he injured his shoulder. He missed this game a year ago in a loss for Illinois State. They were challenging for a league championship. I mean, they were making a run at Loyola, but when Fain went down with the injury, well, watch Von Bray. He makes the pass. Now there's the finish. He never quits on the play, and he's there to stick it back home. Good job, 13. And then there's the dunk inside for Elijah Childs. And hopefully Illinois State does not have a serious problem with Phil Fain's ankle. Again, shot selection. Copeland deferring and cranking. No one in the Valley saw this coming. D'Lo Von Bray already hit from there. Well, they've got this thing blown open to 22. Blown open. Could win and Valpo loses at Indiana State. The Ramblers would be by themselves in first place. I think they're the best team in the league. I do. I think they've got a lot of talent. They're exceptionally well coached. They guard very well and they make shots now that they got Lucas Williamson back. You'll see them on Sunday. I will against Southern Illinois at Gentile Arena. And Yarborough has got to come alive and in a hurry. Well, that's two hoops in a row for him. When he puts his mind to it, he can impose his will on a basketball game. injury for Illinois State so you think Yarbrough's got to take it on here and now Elijah Childs a little wrestling match and fighting over the screen of Ray Dowu. yeah he just ran him over it's a good solid screen by Dowu, and Childs just get out of my way <laughs> boom caught Koch Barr comes in. He had really good minutes. And Luke Von Bray, 14 points. He has career high 20 a year ago. He had 18 earlier this year in a game against IUPUI. Copeland able to slither inside. It has been a frustrating night for Zach Copeland. That's his first two of the evening. But he gets rewarded for his hustle. He does a really nice job on the offensive glass where we said at the start of the game, Illinois State has a decided advantage there. They have not been able to utilize that. Von Bray coming right back. Copeland, junior college transfer, 86% at the line for the year. He is now 26 for 30. And here's the issue for Illinois, or I'm sorry, for Bradley. A third foul on Elijah Childs. Two fouls within nanoseconds, and Childs must set. to that baseline. Daryl Brown is first two of the second half. Really nice job by Daryl Brown to finish in traffic, but D'Lo with an outstanding pass. And Edoa will go to the line when we come back, but Bradley still in control. Outstanding passing tonight. D'Lo finding his senior teammate. A member of the 2016 Valley All-Freshman Team, the official bank of the Missouri Valley Conference Enterprise Bank and Trust, member FDIC, and the embassy of the Netherlands celebrating the game tonight of Luke Van Pret. No question. One of their own. Where's the Dutch flag? We need it right now. He's got range. He's 6'9". He's just a real solid player. He's either stretch four, he'll take you away, but when he starts making shots like this, he becomes a matchup nightmare. 
Wayne Lodier Ogunlier has done a really nice job in a variety of roles. Passing, rebounding, and here he dribbles it off his own foot. Speaking of that, that's how Phil Fane got injured. Yeah. Stepping on a foot. I've done that. I broke my ankle that way. It is a painful injury. Well, the Redbirds need Fane. I mean, that's an obvious statement. He has yet to return to the floor after injuring his ankle. He had that shoulder injury last year about this time of year. They try to ISO Yarbrough. He's going to the line. Yarbrough's got 14. Yeah, he... He needs that. That's where he needs to play. I know he thinks he can step out and make threes, and he can. He's got the ability, but here he just physically dominates guys. He's a stud inside. Well, Lodier Gunley had no shot, and now Fane comes back in. They taped the ankle, ready to go. Up the line, Yarbrough, two of two tonight in his career in this rivalry. He is 22 out of 23 at the line. Got to get a couple stops, and you want to be under 10, under the 10-minute mark. And Bradley can't get too cozy here. There's still lots of time. Monbray nails it. What a night for Luke Von Bray. He's got 17 and he's locked in. He has got everything going right now. He's trying to make the Netherlands Olympic team with this play tonight. <laughs> the road to the final four goes through Kansas City. Tickets are available through the NCAA experience powered by Prime Sport. Get exclusive access, premium seat locations, and hospitality all from one source. Visit NCAA.com slash VIP to secure your seats today. Do it tonight as the Sprint Center will be one of the key sites in the NCAA tournament. Fain. Von Bray and Koch Bar with the defense. And somewhere, Daryl Brown will be reminded he's up 19. Exactly. Settle down and let's run some clock. D'Lo with another rebound. By the way, you said Kansas City just like you do with your chief <laughs> score. You had a heck of a year, my man. I play your highlights all the time. Thank you. Thought uh, I was going to be here tonight no matter what. And then you thought you were ahead of the Super Bowl. Yes, sir. Thank you. So did I. from the corner, man. It's not happening tonight for Illinois State. And Illinois State coming into this game, four and two. They had won four of the last five games. They had that half-court heartbreak at Valparaiso. But rivalry games, Cap, you've seen it all your life. Sometimes can be vastly different than what they people thought the script would be and they're going to go with the tip Fain, they're going to allow it saying it's not on the rim and Fane has 12. and brian wardle wants a timeout settle his guys down 17 up i think it's a good timeout to take so when we come back no more i want a career high tonight and so do these fans this historic arena, again, Bradley tradition, going back to the 30s. Nationally prominent program. Canal out of the timeout. Good cut, really good job moving without the ball again. It's the second time tonight we've seen Canal really do a good job moving without the ball. You see Gassman trailing him down the lane. There's the pass and there's the foul. One of the things you always talk about is Canal leaves it way short after he hit his first four foul shots. How productive are teams out of timeouts? What do they get done in that first possession after a timeout? Call them manufactured points. 
Coaches diagram plays. Players score points. But out of a timeout, the coach can put you in an amazing situation. And he did. A three. Nailed. Zach Copeland finally gets a three. He had five threes in that heartbreaking loss of Valparaiso. He had 21 of the 56 Illinois State points in that game. That's offense. Great job of taking the charge by the Redbirds. Visit participating Schnucks and Hy-Vee locations for the ticket discount section of archmadness.com. People love this. Purina Dog Chow Family Fun Pack. Coupons. Here's the pack. Four tickets, four sodas, two popcorns, only $75. Get your Purina Dog Chow Family Fun Pack today. And now Illinois State gives it right back. Dan Muller trying to chisel away at this lead against his rival, but Brian Wardle's Braves are in. Com. Yeah, and Yanni Molina firing on Chris Bryant this week. That was interesting. Chris said St. Louis was boring, and Yanni went off. Can't wait for that first series early May at Wrigley. Whoa. I love it when baseball is played like the NFL, and when the Cubs play the Cardinals, it's like an NFL game. It is. Every one of them. It's fun. Just like this rivalry, no love lost in the 39 miles between the two campuses. A series that started in 1905. Childs, good pass, good finish. Deshaun Henry's got four tonight. What a great job to change direction in the air, hang and score for Henry. Yarbrough gets fouled. Henry's got a second. And Illinois State goes to the line at the first bonus. Well, we talked about interior passing. There's Childs. What a nice interior pass. Just that little hesitation in the air. Here comes the pass. Defender reacts. Little hesitation right there, and he gets the window. Cap, I want to ask you, though, though, a lot of good passing tonight by Bradley on the baseline. Whether it's short corner, how difficult are those passes to that, make? You don't have the same angles, do you? Well, the, you know, the, against Drake, they made the same passes and could not make the shots. Drake did a great job reacting. Tonight, they're completing those plays. Those are tough passes. Very tough. Still 11-11 to go. But anytime Illinois State starts to think about making a run, Bradley answers. Sean Henry. Well, he is just making big time shots when they need him to. Yarbrough doesn't want to pick up the foul. He just powers it right past him. He's been watching Anthony Parker, old tape or something. Now an offensive foul on Fane. And that will be a third foul on Phil Fane. Uh, let's watch Henry right here. Good catch. And then he just powers it up past Malik Yarbrough. And another offensive foul. The two teams, this is Koch Bar. I'm telling you, this day and age, so many high ball screens are set. It's like speeding on the freeway by yourself with a speed trap setting right there. Right. Guys just aren't very smart setting those screens, are they? Guys, there are red light cameras right there. It's three right. cameras. They're right. going to get Go you. Go do it underneath. They won't find you. Up front, you're going to get it every time. Fouls one and one for Phil Fane. Next up on our Valley Network, it's going to be a JQH Arena in Springfield Saturday. Missouri State will entertain these Bradley Braves. Dana Ford, look out. The twos are hot. Coverage begins at 3 Central on our network stations. Visit for more information, go to NBC-sports.com. I know there's a long way to go here. However, this is one of those when you're scouting Bradley going, well, wait a minute, show me that other tape. 
the tape you saw right. to this tape. It's like, did somebody cut and paste some other team into this group? Dan Watts is the Drake game. It's just, okay, we're playing good back. We're good, man, we're good. They're going to make a run, but we, I think we can handle it. And then he sees this and goes, wait a minute. Whoa. Impressive tonight for Bradley. the skip and a foul on Brown and Yarbrough go right back to the line getting to the bonus early for Illinois State huge they're getting a chance to score with the clock stop yeah that's exactly right Mitch you do not want to let them chip away without time running off they're in the double bonus with 940 to go in the game Yarborough with 18. Outstanding foul shooter, but his best free throwing moments have been in this rivalry. Delo and Von Bray come back in. Do you know a Hall of Fame NBA GM is a graduate of Bradley? The late great Jerry Krause went to school here. Love their tradition here. Now, Illinois State's within 13. Good steal. And Fain, he's going right back to the line. And here's Illinois State. You got to do a better job taking care of the ball if you're Bradley. Great job, Illinois State. On the steal. Just, boom. Just careless with the ball. Nate Cannell. Von Bray goes for the block. And then there's the foul right there. Fame four for four tonight. He's 68% for the year. I mean, I said to you, under 10, you want to be 10 down? All right, plenty of time, 925. You make this one, you're 11 down. Particularly when you get to the second bonus. You're in this game. And it starts to get serious here as Bradley has run the clock down but not able to get late shot buckets. Shot clock buckets. Fain's got four. Still no bonus for the Braves. And Dan Muller wants to get Fain out of there as quick as he can. I just listened to Dan. He said, hurry up, let's go. It's been an issue for Phil really throughout his career, staying out of foul trouble. It's a good matchup for Von Bray. Von Bray. That's 19. Great matchup. He's got long arms. He's locked in. Arbor, a lightning quick. That's where his scoring area is. He likes standing out there jacking threes, but that's where he makes a living. 12 feet in. Game still very much in doubt. Copeland active. Yarbrough poked it loose initially. Look Gotta out. Get a timeout. It's a nine point game. Again, they don't take care of the basketball. Last time Illinois State within single digits. 343 left in the first half. 24 to go in this rivalry oh, game. This thing's wide open. That guy, I think, was very calm at halftime. I think he challenged his guys, but I don't think it was peel the paint off the walls. It was three talk basketball. Guys, we're a better team than this. Get some pride. Let's go. So does Bradley play through Von Bray now? Switch. Got on a good matchup here. Von Bray's got the shorter Evans on him. And Illinois State dodges an arrow. Yeah, they did because Yarborough helped out. Nice job by Malik Yarborough to rotate over, give a little help. 
Copeland scooping. Fun Bray with the defense. Yep, got the block, saved, and then triggered it. And a quick shot trying to answer by Lupin Lundy. Evans, quick three, and a one opportunity. Three plus possible one. And now we've got a five-point game. They bang the three. Take a look again. Good job by Malik Yarborough. Handoff. That's a ticky-tack call. That, that for me is a little too ticky-tack by the official. Great job by Keyshawn Evans to knock the shot down. Well, it's a third foul on Daryl Brown. So he and Cannell both have three. A four-point play for Keyshawn Evans. Five-point game. It was 22 not all that long ago. No, but Bradley has been playing to not lose rather than attacking as they did in the first half. They saw that big lead and went, okay, just run clock, be careful, and all of a sudden you look up, it's a five-point game. Copeland now has three fouls. One and one opportunity here. But it's Luke Mon Lundy. He is just five of nine for the year. Only nine attempts and only five makes. It looks like Daniel Ruffin on that one, bringing back a name from Bradley's past. Wow. Love that team. He was Those really good. Those teams. Well, somebody is going to have to step up and make some big shots. Is that Daryl Brown? Is that Luke Von Brake? Somebody has to. But basically a four-for-one trade. Four on the last possession for Illinois State. And just one of two at the line for Lundy. Indeed game on in the Valley. It's 7.07 to go. Hines scooping underneath. What a move by Matt Hine underneath Von Bray. And we got a four-point game, and it's all trending Illinois State's way. I'm looking at Copeland, and he's got the eye of the Tiger. 16-3. Illinois State run to get right back in the ballgame. Brown. Giant Huge. three. Huge. Giant. Giant three is right. At 626, taking it from four to seven. Bradley in a 3-2 zone and got a turnover. D'Lo. And uh, just like that, you've gone all the way back to double digits. Two humongous shots. Basketball's version of back-to-back -back. 10 made threes for Bradley tonight. That ties their season high. And you could feel the tension build in this building when it got cut to four. And now they're excited and go to a 3-2 zone. Second straight possession in this zone. We'll see how Illinois State attacks it. They turned it over the last time. But Bradley's got to do this without fouling. And Von Bray has got the foul just a second, but Illinois State was in the double bonus four minutes ago. Fane's been perfect at the line tonight. Boy, you're an official in this game. It's 22-point advantage. You're thinking, all right, let's just... Get this game over with. We had no issues. And all of a sudden, you look and you go, oh, boy. Four-point game. We're right back at it. Not in this league, brother. Not in this rivalry. Nope. The war on 74. Thing first miss at the line. Well, you said a 4-1 change before. This was 6-1. The other way. trying to get back-to-back -back home victories against Illinois State, and there's a foul on Hine. Good job by D'Lo. He was going to settle, take the perimeter shot, and then he attacked on Hine and got the block. 
D'Lo will have one and one. Best known for his defense. He was an All-Valley first-team defensive player last year. I'll tell you what, I just saw some great leadership out of Luke Mon Lundy because D'Lo was upset on the foul, and he jumped up, and boom, number two reaches in, pulls him away, and then talked to him and settled him down, pointed at the scoreboard. Hey, we're leading here. We don't need to do anything. Let's go make your free throws. Couple of foul line misses of late for Bradley. Bradley's back to straight man. Just different looks force them to have to. What are they running? What are they running? All right, let's get into this, and then time runs off. Good entry into Fane. Koch bar at the rim. Thought there might have been some contact there. Childs shoving it up there. Not easy. Luke Mon Lundy rewarded for his effort of calming down D Lo to get a stick back. Brian Ward will just yell to the event. How do you not call that? Dan Muller's feeling the same way at the other end. in the middle of that 3-2, but Illinois State, now they find it. And one. Great pass, Hine. Outstanding pass, and Yarbrough's unstoppable in there. And Yarbrough now has exploded to 25 points. There was the defense by Kotchbar. Actually did a really nice job. Might have been some body contact, but it almost... You know, you reward the defender who is standing there with his arms straight up, and the offensive player makes the contact. Fain had hit seven straight, he missed his eighth. Yarbrough had hit six straight, he misses his seventh. Only a second foul line miss in this rivalry in his career. That's on Fain, he's gone. He's done. That's five. Understand, Fain is a smart player. He is a veteran, one of the best on their team. He's got to be smarter than to pick up a ticky tack blocking foul, trying to keep a guard from getting to the rim. Here's your foul trouble. Fain's already gone, but others walking the plank on both sides of the column. Brown, two free throws. He's got 20. 11 just inside four minutes Brown had the two big late shot clock makes a Southern Illinois during the weekend that kind of set up this effort tonight now they try to get it to Yarborough it's off his hand and a turnover on Illinois State well, when they got it to four you could see Bradley was uh-oh and then boom make a three Daryl Brown comes up with a big bucket, then they get the steal. D'Lo makes one, and they've been in control ever since. Copeland trying to heat up Lundy. And Copeland fouls with four seconds on the shot clock. And that's where Dan Muller is like, okay. You, you defend 26 seconds of the shot clock. They're 30 feet from the hoop, and then you just give them this opportunity. Right, Copeland was saying he was hooked. I couldn't see it from here, but the official's standing right there. Well, he was actually trying to put the heat on him at a four seconds. Just stay in front of him, right? Force him to hit a 30-footer. Lundy's been good in the second half. 
Brian Wardle trying to get a second consecutive victory at home in this rivalry, won last February. But that was when Phil Fain had his injury. Gassman, great pass. Fain, excuse me, Hine with a great pass. No look to the corner. Gassman, he's a shooter. Had his feet set, he's ready, and he buried it. against Yarborough. Big time. Big time bucket in the paint. Good possession. Bradley ran their set, got their guy shot. Cancun challenge MVP. 21 and 12 against SMU in a win. Back to the 3-2 zone again. That was not even close. They had Luke Von Bray who's going for a career high right now and just got it. And Luke Von Bray made the defensive play at the other end, flying out to the corner. That was what made it such a tough shot for Hine. 21 points for Luke Von Bray. And now Bradley. Yeah, Bradley. Can roll it home. Yeah, they can roll this one home now. 14 up, buck 40. They're in great shape. They dug deep, man. They had. Every opportunity to fold the tent. Brian Wardle should be exceptionally proud of his guys. And proud of Daryl Brown. You called it. It's 6.26 to go in the game. <laughs> Illinois State had cut it from 22 to 4. And, he, and one. And then he hit the three. And the Redbirds have been no closer than that. Here comes Daryl Brown. Look at that pass. Von Bray catch. That's a big man at 6'9. Catch, finish, and then here is a really nice job by Lundy, and he gets the hoop and the harm. Loopman Lundy. If Von Bray can do this the rest of the year for Bradley. Oh, man. I told you at the start of the game, I re I've liked this kid for four years. He just has to be more aggressive offensively. He hides at times. He's a guy's got ability inside and out. But he's finished close to the rim. He's stretched Illinois State out. He's been a good enough defender. And Lundy's got a career high as well. He had 10 against Drake earlier, 11 tonight. Yeah, Von Brace, three of four from beyond the arc tonight. D'Lo with another rebound. Well, the Bradley of November shows up tonight in the I-74 rivalry. And a rough night for road teams so far in the Valley. Von Bray, 21 points. Seven rebounds, a career high in points, and he's three of four from the floor, from the arc. Outstanding effort. But you know what I thought the biggest bucket of the game was? You mentioned it a minute ago. Daryl Brown's three when it was a four-point game. Yeah, because the tension in the arena was palpable. Yeah, absolutely. Let's give you our players of the game tonight, a presentation of State Farm. They're for you when things go wrong, but also there are here to help when life goes right or help life go right. Talk to an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM. The players of the game. Luke Von Bray for the Bradley Braves. You mentioned his line. What a night. Malik Yarbrough had 25 for Illinois State. And Peter Hanley just got an, a rebound. He gets in the box score. He's a senior who works hard, doesn't play. Good for Peter Hanley. Good job, kid. And a big night for Luke Von Bray. And there's your players of the game we mentioned.